Hi, I'm Dr. Parikh. Uh, right now we're going to talk about identifying the main themes in an article. And I talked about this a little bit uh, in my video last week about how to read a journal article. There are four places that articles tend to summarize. Uh, so those are a great place to start with when you're looking for main themes. And you'll notice these are the same places that I have you summarize in your paper. The most obvious is the abstract, which is supposed to be a snapshot of the paper, kind of a standalone document. As you can read, the abstract usually does a short couple lines telling you the background and rationale for the paper. Uh, so that can be a good place to look. Uh, sometimes there's also a starting paragraph that serves as a roadmap paragraph that outlines what the main points of the paper are going to be. This article doesn't really have that. They kind of jump right into the background. Um, and honestly, roadmap paragraphs are a little more common in more academic sorts of writing, like the paper you're writing here, or like in a dissertation, but you're not gonna worry about dissertations because they're kind of overwhelming to read. Um, and they're not technically peer reviewed. The next place that you can look for a nice overview is, this is like a secret place the discussion section, the first paragraph. Uh, this is after the results, which is kind of like this wild ride of all the numbers and findings. Um, it's often the section that intimidates students the most. So you get to the discussion, it's kind of like everybody takes a breath and thinks about where we are, how we got here, why we're here, and what it means. Uh, so here, again, this article doesn't have, you know, it has a really short introduction, so there's not a lot excuse me, to be found here. Um, the last place, another kind of obvious one, is the conclusion section. Uh, and not every article has something with a heading that says conclusion, but every article has some sort of final paragraph that's like the take-home message. Like, okay, what are you supposed to actually remember out of this article? Um, so the pervasive nature of both direct and indirect exposure, um, two to three year post-disaster. Uh, and when you read each of these articles, you'll notice they're each a little diff, or each of these paragraphs, I mean, you'll notice they're each a little different, but they're also, they have similarities. Um, similarly, for your paper, when you look at those four paragraphs, they're going to be similar. They're going, they should talk about the same thesis, the same main themes but I expect them to be slightly reworded or to emphasize slightly different things. And in the, um, in the outlines and the templates for it, I try to help you see how those are supposed to be different. Um, the last place you can look is headings. Most articles have some headings in the introduction. Again, this article does not. Um, it's the same article that I'm using for a measure um, for later things, but it doesn't have the best literature review. And so actually, when I wrote the article notes, I really struggled to find three points to make because it's this article is so focused on the current study. Um, but you can also, if you don't, if you're still struggling, you can look at topic sentences. So mental health consequences of the earthquake, both within and outside Haiti. So that tells me a lot about what this article is. It's, I mean, it's a big piece of what the authors are talking about, that they're looking at mental health after this natural disaster for people who were living there and who were not living there. Let's look at the next one. Another larger study, N equals 506, that means there were 506 people in the study, was also fielded in the early aftermath of the earthquake, recruiting individuals from Miami's historic Little Haiti neighborhood. So from that, again, I have this idea that they're focusing on neighborhoods that have a lot of Haitian Americans uh, and that there have been a series of studies um, it gives me a hint that the last paragraph probably talked about a smaller than 500 person study. Uh, and then we see these two early studies benefited from their timeliness. Both were conducted immediately post impact. Um, that kind of sounds like they're setting us up to be like, Hey, here's one that has little time lapse and that's not such a bad thing. Um, and I can see words like limitations. Um, and then the study described here was conducted as part of a series of community-oriented health initiatives launched by Florida International University College of Medicine, blah, 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 targeting underserved populations located in North Miami-Dade County, Florida. So 
it's amazing in a well-written paper, and I can't guarantee that all of your papers are going to be well-written, all the articles that you're reading, but in a well-written article, you can learn a lot just from the topic sentences, uh, which is part of why you'll notice I emphasize topic sentences quite a bit in your writing. That's how you find some main themes. Um, I mentioned before, I tend to write keywords in the margins to help me. Um, it helps me track, but honestly, it also, when you're looking for key terms, it makes you read in a different way. So it makes me read in a more focused way because the entire time I'm asking myself, what is the keyword here? How can I summarize this? What's the real point? That's the same reason I assign reading rules because when you have, uh, something in mind that you're trying to do, you're trying to find something to illustrate or you want to summarize the main points. Um, that gives you a purpose as you're reading. For the reporter, that gives you a very invested purpose as you're discussing um, and you're trying to remember what you read. Thanks, bye.